Hello everyone, this is GT Time and I'm your moderator Kyle Bossman and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel including Brandon Jones! Quiet. Daniel Too quiet. Bloodworth! <laughs> Hi. And in the super seat this week, Ben Moore! Hello. And making this all happen, Ian Hink. Uh, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. You get if you just take like five more seconds, and the lowers would be all perfectly timed out. Okay, so I'll, I'll just like add more things to making this. Oh, all I was trying happen. to add something. Just let yeah. Jones you were upset, say his. You were thing. upset that I didn't have like Never an intro. Never try quote. to make that go faster. Here's the thing, Brandon. You had a period. I heard it's quiet, and I'm like, okay, now I'll move on. But I said too it's quiet, quiet, too quiet, right before we started the stream. It's just another weird reference you're making that I probably it, should know. Wait, you don't know it's quiet. Too quiet? That's actually not a reference to anything. That's, That's just like in the vernacular. Yeah, yeah, I don't That's know like the source. I've, I've got Human a bad feeling about this. That, yeah. It's just a thing. Yeah. It's just an expression. Well, that's from Star Wars. I love I've got a bad feeling about this. Like That's from every Harrison Ford movie ever, right. I yeah. think. But if you like think about those words, like having a bad feeling is just such an interesting concept to yeah, me. Yeah, Harrison Ford, ready to be born. I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's said it in like every movie. He's just said like it in the womb. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum always says, must go faster, must go faster. He always says it twice. Does he say that in more than one movie? Yes, he says it in Jurassic Park and Independence Day. That's so funny. That's right. <laughs> he goes, oh, must boy. go faster, must go faster. And Pretty I sure bet, it's twice both I times. I bet too. he thought he improvised it. Yeah, maybe. I bet the second time he did it, he that, thought that's I... That's going to be a correction. Someone's <laughs> going to post a clip I'm of that. Fairly, <laughs> yeah, fairly, fairly sure, but uh, who knows. Fairly yeah. sure is correction time. Uh, yeah. Ben, mm. as the person in the super seat, we have a question for you. I'm really excited about this question. Okay. Immediate answer. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I can put a guess on it, but I won't. I want. Can you just tell me, give me a thumbs up if, if it was your correct... Okay. If the so, guess was correct. Uh, so, listeners, Brandon's thumb is primed to go up or down at any given moment. Ben, the question is... Since it's summer, since everybody's on vacation, mm. if you could travel to anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> dun, 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 most dun, predictable dun, dun, answer dun, 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 ever. You just walk through Akihabara. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> With your signs uh, must going be nice past grin, on yeah. Either side. Yeah, exactly. Ben, I, I don't want to take anything away from your answer, but we, yeah. are, we are three for three right now. What on, do you mean? On, on Tokyo being the place. <laughs> oh, I really? Yeah. Last week too. That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, who yeah. is the first one? Because uh, Brad and Elise. Elise, oh, Elise. Elise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go to Tokyo too. <laughs> yep. Uh, a bunch of nerds. So Ben, why why <laughs> do you want to go though? Awesome. Why do you want to go to Tokyo? Tokyo rules. Um, you know, I got into games when it was still predominantly Japanese games, and so I sort of associate. Japan with being responsible for this thing I love and so I want to go to the place where it comes from the source yeah and and I I like other Japanese things as well I love the food I really like anime I you know all of this stuff I just I have this vision of what anime. Akihabara is like like you're, you're walking down the street and NES cartridges are raining on your head you know mm -hmm. and they still got you know Street Fighter 3 third strike cabinets like on every corner it is exactly like that yeah I that's that's heaven to me like when I die that's that's where I want to go. Ben, my, my number one place is New Orleans in, in the world. Mm -hmm. I would rather you go to Tokyo. I'd rather send you to Tokyo than, I, than go to New Orleans. That's I want to go so bad. Every single year when it's like, yeah, we're not going to G TGS, I just, my soul gets a little bit crushed. Next year. Next year. What yeah, are you yeah. Doing? Next year's the year. 13 you're in, months. You're in no position. <laughs> no one would watch this, but when I go to Japan, yeah. I never do this. I'm not this kind of person, but I will videotape every. I will watch it. I'll watch Everything. your videos. And I'll just, I will sit I'll just through the whole freak saga. Out. You could periscope that? Sure. Yeah, I'll like, watch it live. Hey, I found this Chie statue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about it for 10 minutes. That's what it's going to be like. It's you, just going to be hours of footage like you that. You will get a lot of weird looks, depending on what part of Tokyo you go to. Make but, yeah. a documentary out of Blood, it. But I already yeah. get weird looks <laughs> in America. Uh, we should start corrections, though. Uh, please begin. Corrections music. Oh, I'm using my phone this week. Okay, uh, the one-to-one -one scale Gundam statue is in Odaiba, and it is permanent. It's not going anywhere. This is why I want to go to Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on! That's I, so cool. I think they moved that over there, like, very, like... One, one way or the other, like, either they, they had taken it down from where it was originally, right before I was there, or they put it up right at, like I just oh, so missed, missed it kind it. of thing. You just missed the Gundam. It's still there, man. It's, it's like we couldn't even get a Robocop in Detroit. No. <laughs> couldn't get a Robocop statue. Yeah. Have some fun, Detroit. Uh, anyway, uh, the developers of Dragon Quest XI turned off battles and removed the NPCs from the town to not give too much away. Oh, we were because we talked about how early the game looked, and it turns out those things were removed. 
Uh, fun fact, uh, Yuji Horii will often give away more information than Square Enix wants him to. He did this several times during the conference and was warned multiple times by the producer not to or, or do certain things. Awesome. Love that. Like audibly? Like yeah. you could hear the guy and be like, no, 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 no. This is all from Sazanami style to okay. explain those things. Yuji Horii's a beautiful man. Yeah, I love that idea of this guy. Huge, higher up, and the producer's like, no, stop it. No, he just, no. He, he gets that smile like, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Toy Logic also worked on Dragon Quest X. Um, uh, those shadows that were in the background, oh, we talked about the little people, and I called them a 2D element. They were not at all. You can walk up to them, and they will be 3D cool. actual people. Um, oh, many people want to know why I didn't bring up the NX last week in regards to Dragon Quest XI. And the reason is Square Enix backpedaled after the conference and said it was simply in consideration. Uh, yeah, and Nintendo was like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, I don't know. I think they said Hush Hush. I don't know. They said the games are being considered for NX, which makes me so nervous that, like, maybe even they're considering the portable one. I think they have no idea what the NX is, so I didn't... There's not much to discuss there. How ridiculous. Or they don't know how to explain it. Or yeah. they don't know how not to explain it, you know? They don't know how to dodge the question. Yes. And so, anyway, that is why I didn't put it in last week's episode. That's more of a clarification, anyway. But please, end corrections music. Ooh. Nice. Clean. Uh, let's talk. You, you all know my favorite way to start a show, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> With game announcements. Uh, this week, to be honest, I thought we'd have more game announcements to talk about. We have two, but hey, there are two huge announcements. First of all, Halo Wars 2 was announced this week at Microsoft's Gamescom press conference. Did anyone see this coming? No. No, I, I didn't expect it. Ben certainly didn't. He's shaking his head. No. Like, Microsoft didn't have to do this. I... Halo Wars 2 doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not something you expected a follow-up from. No mm -hmm. one was like, guys, it's, it's happening. It's coming. Just wait for the announcement. And I think it's cool. I think Halo Wars was a really, really smart translation of RTS stuff on consoles. It just, it needed a sequel. Like, I'm curious to see where this goes. Um, not to get too far ahead of ourselves. The only thing I'm worried about is that Creative Assembly is working on it. Not that they don't have the capability of doing it. It's just they're... They're working on so many things. That's like getting ahead of ourselves. We okay. should say that. Creative Assembly announced as the developers. Mm -hmm. uh, they do the Total War games. Uh, did Alien Isolation last year. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the developer, which is crazy because they're owned by Sega. And they're just like, this is these are the people who are working on this huge game who make their own huge games that they make their own money off of. What do you think Creative Assembly gets out of this? They get to work on a Halo game. <laughs> I mean, it's... Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's, it's definitely a win for them. It's, it's kind of a sad state of affairs, but I mean, after the shutdown of Ensemble Studios, what other people that make these type of games really exist, you know? Ensemble made Halo Wars, mm -hmm. the original. Mm -hmm. And what was Ensemble weird Studios. is they announced they were shutting down that studio before the game even came out. Oh, I don't remember that. I yeah. don't remember that either. It, yeah, Ouch. that's that's how the timeline worked for that. It was brutal. Okay. And so, yeah, even like the game, Halo Wars 1 did okay. You know, it broke a million. It didn't mm -hmm. bomb, but it didn't, you know, it wasn't up to Microsoft's Halo standards. So, Brandon, do you think they have more realistic standards for Halo Wars 2? There, what I'm waiting for is there's there's something to this game. There's going to be some mode or some thing, the Windows cross something. You know, like there's there's some reason why someone came up, why, why this was kind of always a part of the conversation. Like I could see this is always ever since Halo Wars happened. This was always on the list, like never scratched it off. But then somebody was like, oh, yeah, we got that new tech, or we can do that with Windows 10. Oh, Halo Wars 2. And it was like, oh, now is the time. Let's do it. Sure. So I think we're like waiting for that announcement, whatever. Or I am. I'm, I'm expecting something else to some kind of functionality or some way. You know, uh, I've seen a lot of people getting excited or reminiscing about the multiplayer in Halo Wars, which I did. I, did the, I you know, wrote and cut the Halo retrospective. So like that was a part of it. And so like I went through and was like, oh, this story is actually kind of cool. And these cutscenes are gorgeous. And Great cutscenes. There were a lot yeah. of things. Um, it, it was a fun game. It was fun to like, you know, you know run little vehicles around like even just like on a uh, 360 controller so I'm like curious to see what the game's gonna look like on you know new gen curious where the story's gonna take it where that's gonna fit into everything um, and curious what that there's got just got to be some other reason because um, they love talking about tech like at the, the at press briefing they came out and they were like want to make sure you understand how the DVR works want to make sure you understand <laughs> how the Windows 10 collaboration works um, so I, I just don't think it's another another huge entry but then they do like spending tons of money on Halo so who knows so blood hear me out on this Okay. okay, so as Brandon just mentioned, yeah, this is announced for Windows 10 and Xbox at the same time. 
so when Bonnie Ross came out, uh, you know, head of Halo, basically, uh, I was expect and and I heard that there's a Halo game getting announced for both. I was like, oh my goodness! And then that game turns out to be Halo Wars. Right. I'm like, okay. I almost think there's an A tier and a B tier of Xbox games. And the B tiers are the ones that they're allowing to go right. cross compatible. <laughs> and the A tiers are the ones that are like, no, you need an Xbox to play this. Is that okay? like, do you think that's accurate? Do you think this is a B tier game? It's, it seems pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, like Fable Legends is, is, you can play that on both platforms. Killer Instinct, you can play on both, both platforms. Uh, I think actually Gears of War Collection. The, I'm sorry, the Ultimate Remake, the Ultimate Gears of War, you can play on both. But yeah, Forza, you know, you need an Xbox to play Forza. It did really interesting that you bring up Fable. Uh, because the way where Fable the franchise is at, like, I loved, I can say all sorts of things that were wrong with Fable 1 and 2 and 3, but, like, I still liked them. I still looked forward to them. I still enjoyed playing with them. I just, I like the world. I like uh, the aesthetic of those games. And so it's, like, it bums me out that, you know, as interesting and as positive as you can be about Fable Legends, like, it is fun. Like, when I played it and I was the guy making the gates come up and, you know, lock everybody and releasing monsters and stuff, like, I got a kick out of it. But I can't say it's where I want the Fable franchise to be right now. Mm -hmm. Where when they, when she came out, she's like, here's a brand new Halo title. I was like this is just sprinkles in a Sunday right now this is this yeah. is a total bonus cool yeah. thing because the series is clearly you know charging right now like the multiplayer for Halo 5 looks great so this was like a total bonus thing so it is interesting that it, it doesn't feel like that you know it feels like it's it's leading that that pack that you're talking about yeah well so I mean I guess it kind of goes back to the you know the to B plus the Metroid Prime sure. Federation Force argument you know it's like it yeah it's like, that's it this it is, feels this, like a bonus if you're getting a real this game. is metroid right now <laughs> yeah whereas yeah if, if you're not getting that then uh, it's like hey what what's going on with fable right now guys why is this the only fable we're talking about um but i think it's i also think yeah number one like with windows 10 they're making such a big push talking about gaming and they have to back that up uh and also as you said like halo wars you know, as 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 big as the name is, like Halo Wars on its own, isn't going to push the needle that much, and so they have to get everything they can out of it. And and they know that there's a huge market for RTS on the PC compared to the Xbox One. Even if people have both, like they're going to rather play the RTS on on their PC. I love the Ben Morse crunchy face. I love when someone's like saying something, <laughs> and like Ben's like he's very polite not to interrupt, but he's just like, <clears throat> "What offended you, Ben? What happened?" Oh, it didn't offend me. It's just. You're right. I think you're technically right. But saying like there's a huge audience for RTS, it, it, that those things are not normally combined very much anymore. So huge, huge is probably where we would call you out on that. Block. Is right. there is there growth there? Do you think? I mean, with, with the with the population of esports looking at games, and it, it, granted, like you know, Dota, League of Legends, here's the mm -hmm. storm. They're not RTS. I'm not like trying to lump those two genres together, but like mm -hmm. this the spectating portion of it, seeing the like momentum and just kind of this bird's eye view of the battlefield, and and you yeah. know, like and, and and commenting on that, like I wonder if this kind of push of, of MOBA popularity within the esports community is and StarCraft coming out. Like, is it possible, like fighting games, is it possible to get a resurgence there and have this uh, this genre come back? I always felt like Halo Wars was not for people that love RTS games. It's for people that love Halo. Sure. This is another way yeah. to experience Halo. You, you don't get, like, top RTS players being like, guys, Halo Wars is the new hotness. Because it's it's not for them, and it's not meant to be like that. I I... I you were talking about B-tier games, and to me, Halo Wars 2 is, is something that makes the Xbox One interesting in a way that it hasn't been before. How is that? Like, it's, it's just so out of left field, yeah. you know what I mean? And especially after the closure of Ensemble, it, just, it was something you didn't think about. And it would be so easy just to have Halo be a first-person shooter until the end of time. I feel like in a weird way, this is a risk and this is them letting people like new hands get on it and, and kind of go crazy. And I think the Xbox One, in my opinion, needs more things like that. Cool. You know? So you're very encouraged by this announcement. I am. I'm extremely encouraged. Um, and I, you know, I, it's weird because I don't, I, I don't expect it to revitalize the RTS genre, but I, I think it's unfair putting those expectations on it. Like, it's just going to be a fun Halo experience that is different from what you've played before. Well, again, you were trying to figure out why, why now, why did this get, to, get announced? I'm just curious if right. that's something that the Microsoft does see happening. You know, that there's a trend that they do see that, like, this is uh, this is a genre that's more popular. Or just well, like, hey, we got to do something else for Halo or we want to... Yeah, like, I mean, I also think there's that angle to it. I mean, they want there to always be a Halo conversation. 
Sure. Uh, and last year they had Master Chief Collection. This year they've got Halo 5. Okay, what's Nightfall. after Halo 5? But honestly, it's kind of the game I was always waiting for Gears of War that never happened. Like, every time I experience Gears of War, I feel like I pretty much experience it the same way. Not that each game doesn't add new additions or new mechanics or, you know, all of that stuff, but we've never experienced that setting in a totally different way. I got and a totally like different way for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, and this is just pie in the sky, but this is something that I think about if they're going to, if this is a franchise now, you know, if it's not just kind of like a fun, like ODST reach, just kind right. of a fun little experiment they did, but they're like, no, 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 we want to make, there might be a, you know, Halo Wars three in the future. Uh, if there was a game and it doesn't even have to be like the reason these two games are built, but if they have some kind of shared mode where I can be on the ground as like as a soldier, as a Spartan running yeah. on the field, or I can be a commander controlling the battlefield, Huge win. If, right. if you can build, maybe have the Windows 10 version of the game, be more focused on RTS and have the Xbox One version of Halo, you know, Halo what's, 6 or whatever. The, that was the idea with Dust, shooting. right? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah, that was the dream the, of Dust. I mean, I, yeah, but, I mean, you, think, you imagine the team behind Dust, that's not 343. You know, that's, the, that's not the experience these guys have, the money they have, uh, or, or not necessarily the money they have, but the money that's being spent on the games that they're working on, potentially, if they really want to make a big play with Halo, if they well, really want to the, get PC gamers and console gamers playing together. The only thing is... Is, is if three for three said this is our initiative we're going to try to do this crazy new thing I'd be really nervous because they couldn't successfully bundle four Halo games together. Zane, yeah. but they, but I mean that was, but the more I think about that, that was thing. that was just dealing with all these old games and 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 it and it seems like a neat concept because the thing is like it's like. Master Chief Collection seemed like a concept that like was a great idea on paper, and then they actually got into it and were like, "Whoa, this is really tough to pull this whole thing off," and it was too late, you know. And, and they just kind of like had to, you know, the train came into the station, and that was the game. Whereas when you start something completely from scratch, you know, if you, when you go back with a new engine, Halo right. Wars to it, you know, um, I, uh, I. I, I think they can do it. I'm it's actually cool excited idea. about this. I'm curious to yeah. check it out. I love one thing we talk about trailer score a lot, and we're not going to trailer score this uh, debut because it's so short. Yeah. But uh, um, I love just the title. Boom. You know, just love the straight cut. You know, Absolutely. It doesn't, doesn't come slamming in. It does. There's no big animation or anything. It just cuts straight to like Halo 2. Yeah, it should be Halo Wars mentioned. 2. I guess it was announced with a CG trailer yeah. that essentially had two shots: one person getting dragged away while firing a gun, and then a, a brute. And then the Jeral Hanai, I think they're called. Oh. Or brute. That's like their name in the, the covenant speak. Wow, nice man. Yeah. Some, something well, that was that's a tough word. You yeah. know, once you remember to pronounce that, you, you never forget Hanai. it. Gerald Hanai. That's how I thought you pronounced it. Something that you know, Creative Assembly is well known for with the Total War games is you have you control hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of units at once, and you can zoom in and see yeah. these these battle ha battles happening on a very like close personal level. Imagining that, but not with like Roman soldiers or samurai, but with UNSC and Covenant, yeah. is really cool. To well, me. just the first yeah. shots of Total War Warhammer, even though I know nothing about Warhammer, right. is like, oh, this looks really cool with uh, like yeah. big crazy monsters going in. Plot wise, do we think this is a Covenant heavy? game you know that's definitely the i think it's like the last things he says he's like run demons or run humans or whatever like yeah you know it's really the focus on him and this character who like i might know if i had paid more attention to halo wars um Just or or or, or uh, novels as halo tends to do like i wonder if that's kind of the you know there will be you know uh spartans and whatnot in it but uh the unsc but like more of a focus on i i don't pretend to speak for all halo fans but if you said what factions do you want to control in a halo rts to me it is covenant and unsc yeah like, those are the ones i care no about. flood please yeah <laughs> please no flood and uh oh man what's the new one called the, oh yeah the bad the guys halo 4 showing up mm -hmm. oh like the forerunners right no the forerunners made these new guys who are called the protheans Yes. Prometheans. Q correction. I was thinking right. Prometheans, but no. I, wait, it's it might be Prothean. Yeah, it's the, it's something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We should wrap it up before yeah, we boy. get ourselves Halo in trouble. Halo 4 is is a it's just a fog in my brain. Exactly, yeah. None I of played it, none of so much of that game. Yeah. You saw the fog but of war for him. I don't know. They open up, they got orange skulls. Let's the, talk about another the, game announcement. The fog of the war. Protheans. Uh, it sounds right. It might be Prothean. Okay. Uh, Mafia 3, bad. officially revealed this week, was kind of announced last week. If, this week we see it. Uh, we announced with a CG trailer. However, uh, after the CG trailer, I think we have a different in impression. So basically, a CG trailer is kind of classy. Uh, you know, very low-key uh, narration, uh, just vibes are cool. Uh, revealing New Orleans. It's interesting you use the word classy. I think they. I think it's intentionally not as classy as, as Mafia One or Mafia Two. Sure, I, he's not wearing a suit. You know, he's yeah. not. He's he's listening to rock instead of like a swinging fifties band. You know, like it's definitely kind of got a more. Uh, Streetwise kind of vibe, but even like paying for those music rights to me, it, sure, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. like it, it's a different trailer from like even Halo Wars. Production you know I mean? value wise, it's a classy trailer. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but then, uh, in screenshots and gameplay videos we see from the show floor, Mafia 3 is a very action-heavy game. Uh, Huber showed me this video of the cars just running into each other and exploding around you, which is very unlike Mafia. Running up to a guy and just stabbing him repeatedly? Yeah, just in like the right face. in the yeah. face. Yeah. <laughs> and that other one, he just like bashes his head into the side of the stairs. Yeah. I'm... I am absolutely terrified that they said to themselves, we have this thing lying around. Why don't we just do something with it? You know, it, it, didn't, it didn't come from a place of we need to make this game and we need to continue the Mafia Legacy. I don't know. I mean, is it? I don't know. It's the same yeah. developer, isn't no, it? No, 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 no. It's not? No, no, no. no. Oh. Uh, what are they called? They're called... Uh, it's like Hangar 13 or yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, think about okay. So let's let's break it down by the elements that we know. So okay, you, let's you just, break it down. Okay, let's break Here we it go. down. So We're you just said you just said there's a heavy action, and that, yes. and that might not be like the thing that Mafia Three is going to be known for. It's just the thing that they chose to show ahead of time. We have these multiple characters uh, that we can't play as, but that are kind of like Metal Gear Solid Five, where you can like bring two missions and you can kind of pick like who you want to have with you. Um, and then we have the time period, so we got 70s, mm-hmm. or 68, I believe, somebody, I saw someone say, okay. officially, uh, so maybe like late 60s, early 70s. Um, and so you, you think about like announcing this game, and you're going to Gamescom, and you really want to get noticed, because potentially it could be one of two of the new games announced at the show. Sure. It's like, what do we focus on? Do we really like introduce it, and then like, okay, now let's really get involved. Let's release screenshots showing these characters talking to you or like oh let's do screenshots showing like a stealth mission or like let's get the car explosions out of the way first no, let's let's no. let's let's really do something eye catching really do something that that people are going to be talking about that'll be kind of shocking and brutal and then like then we can get into specifics but like it, then we can really show you like how deep the story is and how different it is like then we can really show you different dynamics of like how you explore the city and how you you know discover new areas and stuff like that you no like we can't we, we don't know everything we we're ever going to know about mafia 3 the first week it's announced but it didn't it didn't the gameplay didn't look shocking or exciting it just looked indistinct yeah that's what okay. i think i think that explosions that's aren't shocking thing. anymore do you know what i mean you know, if you show an explosion that looks the same shocking but for mafia what's funny yeah. is i personally was super into that trailer yeah the way that it's slowly built up and then mm-hmm. it is and new orleans is an incredible setting there, there's so much you can do there and it yeah. seemed like they were tapping into that in that cd trailer um but I just when I was looking at the Mafia Three gameplay, and again, this is this is a knee jerk response, but I was like, I've played this game a hundred times before. Like, there's nothing about this that that makes you feel special. And somebody said it seems like a sequel to those Godfather games uh, on Xbox and Xbox mm. 360 more than it does um, Mafia, and I, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've never played Mafia games, Hubert sings about them and the things that he says that he likes the most i'm like oh man that's that's totally cool basically there is a story to this there's a progression to the mafia games uh but never like side missions never little things that you go off and do on your own in the city so it has an open world the open world is just your backdrop basically Mm -hmm. uh this is not the case any longer this is this is like an open world game like we're used to where you do have to, there's like little stupid things on the maps, and you can go do side quests for people. And I things love those like stupid that. things. Yeah, I mean, people. <laughs> I mean, humans do. We love yeah. we love doing things like on the map, but this it's keep it keeps re- removing the things that made Mafia special, like things that are unique to Mafia. Bloodworth, do you think it's a good call? Do you think Mafia Three will be more successful for having explosion, exploding cars, and things to unlock <laughs> on the map? Um, I definitely know that there are a lot of people that down Mafia 2 for not having anything out in the open world. So that could be a thing. The exploding cars, I, I don't know. It's it's, it's kind of weird because, cause, uh, yeah, didn't because I didn't actually play the previous Mafia games either, but wasn't that a, a thing that people talked about? Like the cars like went at like realistic speeds and they were pretty slow because of the cars of the era? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, was like, well, I, mean, think about, I think at least in Mafia 1. In Mafia 2, it's not as bad. You think about how much performance... I mean, maybe this is just always happening and I was only thinking about it at Gamescom, but like people talk about performance a lot at Gamescom in the presentations. Like they showed... We saw that Agni's philosophy again, you know, just so they could show that off. Forza guys came out and were really stressing. Like, you know, we have all these, you know, unique weather elements. It's all running at you know 60 frames uh and so it's like again like you just you can show five six screenshots from this game are you going to show a dude on the sidewalk are you going to show him like well, they, up, they are you going to show him up too. against like a door like 
or are you going to show like a car upside down with giant flames flying off Don't of it do that. and people running, you know, just tons of dynamic elements so I can really see so you can show your game up. I'm not saying it's the best thing. I'm just saying it it to me seems in line with a lot of a lot of what people are showing. A little bit of a where we're walk. at in this gen where they really want to make that push to so like we're really figuring out how to make these consoles sing now and we want to show it off. I don't know that slow walk there with it. Do you remember that part where like the the police were arresting somebody or something and he's just like, oh, just walk around this. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's gonna be part of it too, is like that's a crazy time in our history, uh, socially. Uh, Brandon, that depresses me so much though, that mentality that we like need explosions. Cause that's honestly the reason this game is what it is right now. There's somebody who said, how are we supposed to sell this? It's 2015, come on, where are the explosions? Right. What, are you just going to hide around the whole game? Like, no. Like, show me some explosions. But it doesn't, it, it, it makes me question what they could have done at Gamescom, but it doesn't make me think that, like, oh, that means the game's going to be bad. Or, or that means that's going to be the I focus I mean, that's the, the game, time. man. We saw the cars drive around. You, like, we saw just, like, a, a, a head-on collision almost, but the like, guy dodged it and, like, tapped the side of the car. And then you see in the rearview mirror, it explodes. Right, but, like, that's, carriages, that's carriages and Syndicate is an example. Like, they made a huge deal about that. And, like, yeah. when I sat down to demo the game, you know, at, uh, uh, at E3, they were like, carriages are huge, man. You can get in. You can take another guy. You can get off that. You can jump in between them. And you can do stuff. And, like... I was like, I can probably get over there faster if I just get up on the rooftop and zip, zip line over. Line. And she was like, you have to get in the carriage. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so I was already kind of over the major thing they were selling. You know, like, it's cool. I'm glad you put it in there. It's an interesting dynamic. I like seeing them run around. Like, if there was a fight on top of one, like, that would be an exciting mission. But, like, I'm not really the type of Assassin's Creed player where, like, I'm going to be like, oh, I got to get across the map. Let me just grab a carriage. Like, I'm going to always run across the rooftops. So, again, there's a difference between what's going to be the good stuff in the game that you play, that you enjoy for yourself, and mm -hmm. what they're going to choose to put the spotlight on at the game's announcement. Speaking to your point, Brandon, I remember when they were first showing off gameplay for Ground Zeroes, and they showed the slow motion stuff, mm -hmm. and everyone was like, this is the end of Metal Gear Solid. This is not oh, what Metal Gear that. Solid is. Yep, yep, it's yep. going to be too action-oriented. They're, they're, they're taking this thing and ruining it. And it turns out that's not the case. Like, it is different, but once you actually get your hands on it, you get to play around with all of the systems, it made a lot more and sense. And it's open world. And yeah. I think that also, you know, there's so many different options and so many different ways you can play these games potentially. Uh, we were talking about the, explo the explosive stuff in Crackdown. Like, there might be a chance that you can play Crackdown and never destroy, destroy something, unless they specifically, like, put an objective marker on it and, t and tell you to. You can be like, oh, that's kind of fun, but it also is kind of frustrating to, like, dodge this stuff that's falling over. Um, uh, it's, it's that freedom. That's why I love the genre. Yeah, I do. I want to go back to Microsoft. Microsoft's had a lot of huge things they talked about at Gamescom. Uh, I'll start with the, the things that weren't huge, uh, because it was announced that uh, with your HD antenna, you can now use your Xbox as an uh, DVR. You can yeah, but you TV. can only do it with, like, free, t you know, like, basically stuff that comes over the air, not, like, yeah. paid t cable channels. Right. So it's just like, okay, well, how much of that do I actually watch? I use an HD <laughs> antenna. I don't pay for cable. I just have the t uh, the airwaves give me TV shows. But yeah, I wouldn't use that DVR very often. But hey, it's a thing. It's a thing. I mean, I do think it's it's smart that they're you know they have it that you you can send it over to your devices and and that kind of thing. That's kind of a a perk compared to what most people have on their their other DVRs. Absolutely, actually, yeah. Uh, uh, all future games with gold games will be backwards compatible. Uh, backwards compatibility launches for the Xbox One in November with over 100 games. That was a huge announcement. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I haven't been paying attention to that. There, there are currently no backwards compatible games on Xbox One. They actually haven't launched the that one. Yet. Well, right. the ones that came with Rare Replay may be the first, I think. Correct. Yeah, because yeah. they they actually download those games. Separately. Yeah, the kind of stealth launch of backwards compatibility. Yeah, and then the other people are just like uh, beta testers, basically. They're in okay. the preview program. Hmm, cool. Um, uh, you will be able to buy a keyboard, oh, a weird little keyboard controller, yeah. like oh, a yeah. input onto the bottom end of your controller. Yeah, yeah, I had one of those for the uh, Xbox 360, but it it was a lot more flush. It, like once you connected it, it felt like it was part of the controller. Yes, this looks very awkward. Yeah, I mean, I should have brought up an image, but it, it's just it just kind of like hangs out of the controller as opposed to neatly like snugging in like the well, 360. Like I, I played Final Fantasy XI on the Xbox 360. You got to talk to people when you play that game. There's no way around it. And like it was, yeah. it it did not break my back to just like put the controller down, type on the keyboard, keyboard that yeah. I had plugged into that's, my 360. That's the way and to then do pick it. The controller mm -hmm. back up. <laughs> uh, as opposed to like more than anything though besides all these weird little announcements i want to talk about like the games lineup basically that that's going on right now because quantum break was announced for april we have an april release date of 2016 for quantum break finally has a release date after all these years uh scalebound and crackdown 3 they were shown also announced for 2016 halo wars 2 was announced and also hey this will come out fall 2016 
And at E3, we learned that ReCore, Gears of War 4, and Sea of Thieves are also 2016 games. It's a pretty good year. That's a good year. Do you believe it will happen? Not all of them. There'll be two or three that slip. So my feeling is two or three should slip. That's almost like too good of a year, right? No, if they if they actually schedule them out well. I mean, if they're all, you know, if you have five of those come out in November, then it's a problem. But yeah, space them, space them out. Put Sea of Thieves out in the summer. I mean, you're right. What is that? That is seven games. If you do it, Re- like, Recore's yeah. got us. There's no way. Recore is going to be Q1 of 2017. Sure. Q- Recore is the one we've, we've only seen a CG trailer yeah. of. That always makes me pretty suspicious of how that game is being developed currently. If, if you just do a CG trailer with nothing else. But I think regardless of if they actually keep to a schedule, it's smart for Microsoft to set that up. Because I think that was like the, the big difference at E3. It's like Sony came out and just blew our mind with all these dream projects. But like we don't know what they're, you know, it's like, has this game even been started yet? Whereas Xbox, like, didn't have as many exciting announcements, but the announcements that they made, like, do see on, on track. Like, they are projects that we can look forward to very quickly. Yeah. And so they probably just wanted to keep that going because they knew Sony wasn't going to be saying anything this week. So it's just like, let's really cement the, the next year of our audience's lives so they can look ahead at the stuff that's coming. True. I mean, with the exception of ReCore and Halo Wars 2, all these games are play, like, look playable right now. Mm-hmm. All yeah. those games Scalebound was the only game they played on stage at EA or um, Microsoft. Yeah, and I mean, we only saw one on stage demo at E3 as well, which was Uncharted. But most of the time, that doesn't happen anymore. Somebody will. Gears don't... was also playable, I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Good call. Yeah, somebody holding a controller on stage. I yeah. love, I love that every time. Roddy Ferg. Yeah. Is that what you call him? You get to call him Roddy Ferg? <laughs> no, I just, I just made that up right now. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I like it. That should be his uh, Twitter handle. Uh, ben, are you pretty impressed by this lineup? I am. I'm extremely impressed. Uh, because it's. It's kind of all over the place. The, yeah. There's a lot of variety there. Um, and, you know, I <laughs> the, the sort of core Microsoft lineup is not that incredibly exciting to me. And it's not that I, I hate it or I think it's bad. But, you know, when you say Forza Halo Gears Fable, I just... I, it doesn't ignite passion in me, right? And so it's these it's these weirder things. It is the recourse. It is the scale bounds mm-hmm. that make me be like, yes, I want to spend more time on my Xbox in a weird way. You know? I absolutely understand so. that. Even Quantum Break, where yeah, and Quantum Break, I'm super pumped on Quantum Break. Yes, like when it was like the action heavy stuff, I wasn't too on board. When mm-hmm. we see him walk into this warehouse and see a time machine being built yes. in uh, real time, yeah, basically yeah. A, 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 to describe it was like time-lapse photography where you just kind of like you see a stadium, but that's happening in real time in an environment you're in. That's something I hadn't I, seen before. And I think that's actually one of the reasons uh, that I liked Alan Wake. I really, yep. enjoy, I really enjoyed that game. I'm, I'm in the minority, but like uh, I really liked how um, you know, they, I liked like seeing a tower way off in the distance and hearing this radio announcer like the whole time and then like going into the actual booth and like he's talking like now he's got the mic up and he's just like okay that was the song and oh hey look uh, Alan's here he's like Alan wake just walked in the studio and I'm like that was a really cool through line you know that like I'm, I have his voice in my head and then now I'm here you know I, I feel like I I made a journey to this point and so it's exciting like for them to uh, I think they 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 do fun I mean w- way back to the original Max Payne yeah. where like you're walking through this big dark area and you're mm-hmm. following a blood trail yep. on the ground so you don't fall off and you're a baby crying and it's just like they really like messing with. You know, like you're playing a level, but you're also getting the story, and you're, you're not—you don't really have a firm grasp on reality right now. My, I think uh, uh, Remedy does that really well. Absolutely, my favorite things about Remedy games is I, I say to myself, "What is going on?" And it's just—it's a ride in a way that other games aren't rides. Like I feel like if you were to type out the story of Alan Wake and hand it to somebody and say, "Hey, what do you think?" They'd be like, "What? No." Yeah, this like is dumb. when Alan Wake ended, I was like, but "Okay." The uh-huh. way they tell it and the places they put you in and, and how they sort of distort time it's just they're, they're you can see them just wanting to surprise you and taking delight in in kind of flipping expectations and they they do it better than so many other people and that's what it seems like quantum break is going to be to me yeah like uh, i remember uh, uh bioshock when you like really early in the game when you walk up upon this lady that's like uh, leaning over a baby carriage mm-hmm. and like you know she, she attacks you and then you get to it and there's a gun in it but like they they, they kind of hand you the power to decide how long it's going to take for you to get to that woman you know it's not like a, a cut scene where you you get the cameras like okay we're going to have four seconds on her and then she's going to just automatically turn around you see her and it's like if you're replaying the game you can just run up and start smacking her or like what I did I really like slowly walked up to her to really like you know like increase the drama and so I, I just like being given that control and that, that's what was cool about that moment. Like way back to you know him seeing this whole time machine being built. It's like you can move that camera around. You can get right up, you know, close to it, or you can kind of slowly walk up to it. I like that. I like Zapawa. Uh, I hate the, that the gun in the baby carriage, though. 
You don't like that moment? I think I'm just a Bioshock hater. I think I'm just oh like, gosh. fine. We, all, we, we, all, need, we I, all need some to hate. I was expecting like some glorious defense. It's like, no, nah, I'm just a hater. You know, I, I have to, I think I've just come to accept that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah I'm just a hater. The boy, do I hate that game. Um, we should move on. <laughs> we uh, More things to hate, of course. Uh, World of Warcraft Whoa. had a big announcement today. Which Ben hates. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, no, no. A new expansion, World of Warcraft Legion. They called their presentation for this. They said, thank you for watching our PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> when it was done. The problem was not what they said. It was how they said it. What do you mean by that? The, they, there were, it there went were an four, hour and a half, right? There were four bullet points on the screen, and they were like the new dungeons. And instead of showing us the new dungeons, he's just sitting up there going point by point describing them. So we're just watching this guy and these bullet points and having to list them and having to use our imagination to try to imagine what these will be like. How is he describing them? He's just like, this is where this dungeon is. This is the context for the dungeon. And it was, th that's fine, but when this is a big tenant of your, your new expansion, you know, the, there was just a story that World of Warcraft uh, subscriptions are, are at the, the lowest point in a very long time. I think that's, I saw... Halved within the last six months. Wow. That's crazy to me. Yeah, that's it's insane. You need to generate excitement. Yes. Putting bullet points on screen is not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's. You you saw the uh, the people would were doing uh, static cutouts of the audience reactions, and even in the audience, people were just like looking on their phones or. You, oh, it was really interesting to, to compare or, actually just the crowd, just looking at shoulders and heads. Like from the beginning, everyone's just like frozen; they're like so wrapped, and then like by the end of it, you just see like lots of swaying yeah. and lots of people. Like, oh, Hardcore God, standing here World of Warcraft hour. fans, yeah. yeah, who are there to see an, an announcement, and yeah. those people are let down. That's a yeah. bad sign. It's okay. They're just so, bored. Yeah. It, so so the. The way that they approach that is they, they broke it down into like three or four like core categories. It was like the story, mm -hmm. uh, our, our weapons, and, and the heroes, uh, the class specific stuff that we're doing heroes. I'm playing too much Hearthstone. Uh, and um, uh, the uh, uh, dungeons and like how, that, how that's going to work. Yeah, prestige and how PvP is going to work. I think those are the four main groups that they mm -hmm. did. And so within each group, like there was some gameplay we could watch, you know, that like was inexplicably like at the end of what you were showing. And like there were some stills we could watch or like you were talking about with dungeons, there's nothing. And it's literally just like you're just going through all these bullet points. The mistake was, I think, to break all those up by the four different categories yep. and have those two guys just kind of standing in the background. What they should have done is look at all what assets they had for what thing, regardless of whether they're just going to jump from PvP to class or something and order it in order of how exciting the announcement will be of what you're talking about. So like if you have all that PowerPoint stuff, save all of that to the very end and get the anything you have gameplay of, talk about that for I don't care if you're swapping around to different categories. Only show the stuff that you can make the most exciting for the people that are there. You know what's funny is conventionally I would say no, uh, because you have those people there, but you also have to consider your online audience. And if you do have a message to convey, if you want to show your game off in a great way, uh, and they were streaming this live to the world, you should have your most entertaining stuff up top because you're going to lose people as it goes and then you won't show them the things that you wanted them to see. But I've been thinking about this. I wonder how much our criticism of this event matters, like how it was presented, because the vast majority of people did not wake up to watch the stream or had to go to work or something. They're just mm -hmm. going to read a post on some website that has it all like very quickly summarized. But who so, wrote that post? The person who had to watch that stuff, right? And like, so it doesn't. It does shape their opinion. Yes. Yeah, I think I think it is important. I, and I just like, I, Ben. I think you nailed it, man. Like they need something more than World of Warcraft Legion to get their, to get the subscribers back up. I I'm not saying Blizzard isn't enthused about World of Warcraft anymore, mm -hmm. but. They're, just just the tone those guys were taking. Like, yes, particularly that first guy. And, they, and he and was just going through the motions. The story guy. Know. And and it's it's tough because it's like we want to show you the PowerPoint presentations because really features are more important than anything because you guys are here. You guys have waited for this presentation. You guys want the facts. You know, mm -hmm. like so I understand like when they're like we can't. They're like they should have shown something from that dungeon. Like there might be nothing. Like they yeah. literally might have nothing. And mm -hmm. so it's like the, this PowerPoint presentation is going to be better than showing you nothing. But at the same time, the story guy comes out and like really starts like speaking a language that's like. I'm not that excited for this because I don't know anything yet, you know. And so you get in, and it's what like what kind of language? You're just like, yeah, you know, trolls are not going to be happy about that. But when are trolls ever happy? You know, it's like he didn't say something like <laughs> yeah. that, but you're like, what yeah. are you, what what? Like, why are you? Why did you even those six seconds you just took to tell that joke is six seconds that I'm not hearing more things about Warcraft? Right. So it's like e either make it a big theatrical experience with lots of cinema and music and you know, like you know, Mets and getting all excited, you know, like these guys that you know can come out and really sell it to the crowd, or just make it a PowerPoint thing and like just, and get through that as fast as you possibly can. 
Because, like, uh, I can't remember what the second guy who came up, I think it was the guy who did the weapons and did, like, the difference between his pace. He clearly came out and, like, we identified with the crowd and was like, all right, let's get into it. You know, like, mm-hmm. I let's, thought you let's. said cinnamon music. Mm. And I was cinnamon like, music. I don't know what that cinnamon is, but it music. sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a question. Do you think that World of Warcraft should just kind of ride itself out like this? Do you think it should just keep kind of, like, you know, doing its improvements as it is and just kind of. It's going to end eventually. Do you think it should do this, or do you think it should do something radical and maybe something that, that would be crazy and make fans angry? Do you know what I mean? Kyle, that's a weird thing because, you know, you, you say, like, oh, my gosh, like, subscriptions are cut in half. It's at such a low point. Yeah. There's still, like, five and a half million people playing this game. More, right? than, so ele- more than 14, for sure. Yeah. Still number one. Right. Yeah. Like, there's so many mm-hmm. people still playing this game mm-hmm. no matter what. Uh, and... You know, I think when you have when you're still responsible for that large of an audience, writing it out seems really weird to me. You know, uh-huh. uh, because I, I think about the way expansions are announced for smaller games like EverQuest One and Final Fantasy XI. They're like, "Hey, here's the uh, our new expansion," and they throw up a video on YouTube, sure. and because because they know what their audience is and and use their resources <laughs> accordingly. I feel like. Blizzard could have done more here, especially if they're going to make this a yearly thing. What could they you know? do? Um, so the way they announced this trailer is they had a little video, and then they, they kind of went into all this stuff. I think they could have built up excitement a little bit more. Show us a teaser. Like, Illidan is on the cover of this expansion. Mm-hmm. One of the most important, significant, recognizable characters in all of Warcraft. Just, just tease us, you know? Like, on Twitter, say, like, show, like, Illidan. Here's Illidan. And then, like, people run wild with speculation. And then show a trailer. And then, once you have more stuff prepared, talk about just the new class. Like, is the, the new class is probably exciting enough that you could just focus on that. Make what it is a, it? It's Demon Hunter? Demon Hunter, right. Cool. So you don't, you don't have to talk about... Like, we know there are going to be dungeons. We know there are going to be raids. Mm-hmm. What really makes this expansion exciting? And focus on that. Like, it yeah. was just the lack of focus that I think hurt this Yeah, because I think... Isn't that, like... I don't know. Doesn't it seem odd to you that, like, this can be in such an early state, and and we don't have any kind of release window at all, right? No, but I bet we get something during BlizzCon. Yeah, I'm sure. But it, it seems strange to me to go into so much nitty gritty detail about how this system is going to work and how that system is going to sure. work. If well, that, you can't yeah. get out there and actually act on it, mm-hmm. I, and ironically, that's like the that's how you don't build anticipation. Like not mm-hmm. to like translate this into how you make trailers, but like do it if you you know the the way to edit something well, you know, is to uh, always attempt to make an edit a half a second before people expect it. You know, so you're constantly just you're, I want more, I want more, I want more. And if you are watching a sequence where it's like you're getting everything with every yeah. shot, then it just kind of slowly gets tiring. So like when they put up a bunch of weapons, like they talked about, so you can, art- you can have artifact weapons. So like Ashbringer is a very like powerful or a very important, you know, sword in that game. You can mm-hmm. you can wield Ashbringer. You can have it look like what everyone expects it to look like, or you can freak it out and have like a shattered version of it or a lightning version of it. And they put that thing up on screen and then they talk about it for like five minutes. And it's like, if they just put up, we're like, so say you can make Ashbringer look like this and just show it and be like, okay, next thing. And have people be like, oh no, duh. And so now it's like, okay, now I'm gonna go straight to the website after and sure. like look at each of those really right. carefully. Exactly. You know, and, and the information will be there, but it's like, as long as you're on stage, you know, like make it a show, like make it. Uh, I hear you, Brandon. And and you you said, Brandon, that that probably the majority of people don't care about this, but I I'm gonna challenge that. It's something I'm very upset by. So Ashbringer, there's there's one Ashbringer in World of Warcraft. Right. Hugely so important this is a sword. sword, an important sword. Yeah. Okay. Very important. Sure. Okay. Has a history to it. Even back in the Warcraft games. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. 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 It's a very important sword. Um, and having every one run around with this sword, seeing seeing it all over the place and being able to change its color and the way it looks. That ain't right. That, like, <laughs> it just says to me that you don't care about this thing that maybe the way the fans do. Wow. You know? And perhaps that's being too harsh. Or you, you not that you don't care, but that you're willing to make sacrifices like that. You're willing to make Ashbringer look stupid, you know, for the sake of giving people variety, giving them that access, but still making it unique, you know, having your cake and eating it too. 
um, you, it, it hurts the Lord. Like I, I just I see I see just the work of making decisions that hurt the Lord, not because they don't care about the Lord, but because they're like, ah, we'll take a Lord hit because it'll just at the end of the day, do you think mo- mo- the most the majority of the people will be okay with it and or excited? Do you think when you say to yourselves, ah, we'll take a Lord hit, like that's a bad sign for your game? Yes, uh, that that hurts me deeply because that is a major reason of why I play the World of Warcraft for right. the world. I play it to be there. You know, like I have I have just as much fun doing a dungeon as I do making a fish feast. Like that's just me. It's the way I play the game. Like th- honestly one of my favorite memories ever of World of Warcraft is fishing and getting that turtle mount and like I, I lost it like I freaked out like I like got to Facebook which was like ah, I like threw up a picture like that was like a point zero 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 three percent chance of getting that thing and just mm-hmm. like and it, it uh, moves on water so you can just take the turtle right out of the surface of the water and go swimming um, lost it and how dumb is yeah. that you know it's yeah, like yeah. that's not Ashbringer you know right. that's just yeah. something that I went in and found in the world so I uh hope no man's sky will be like that right it'll be like that uh i want to do some quick updates to prior stories from prior gt times uh firstly mega man sorry oh my gosh what a slip up there mighty number nine <laughs> cool. is delayed again this week easy mistake i gotta say it's pretty easy mistake. mighty man it looks a lot like mighty man that's, that's um, gross <laughs> okay so uh this game was delayed again just just this week uh it was slated to come out in september i mean you could you can still actually go to amazon and pre-order this but it was meant to and it was the sucky thing was that retailers ahead of this said, hey, this game is not coming out till 2016. And the team behind Mighty Number no. 9 said, no, 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 hold on. No, that's that's wrong. And so, the, you know, online retailers were pushing the game back before they were willing to announce it. And then they, like, officially announced it just this Monday to Kickstarter backers uh, and saying, like, you first. We, we wanted to tell you first when clearly they were telling retailers first. Game Informer published an article on Friday saying this game is delayed. Right. It just it's, it really rubs me the wrong way in a lot of ways. Well, also, what is the value of telling backers first? They're gonna just tell everybody right afterwards. I don't understand <laughs> if you're gonna announce the delay and just announce the delay. Who would really be pissed off? The backers. Let's tell them first. Let's have that. Let's have this explosion of bad news start right at the epicenter. I, I think you should tell the backers spread. first because they're the reason you're here. Yeah. You would not be here without right, them. Right, but I mean, I don't know. They're gonna hear it at, like. They, they're not necessarily going to hear it from the horse's mouth first just because you told them first. You know what I'm saying? It's like they didn't necessarily check that email before like they came across their Twitter feed. Oh, yeah. It's definitely just to be nice. It's, it's definitely just a formality, basically, to tell the backers first. And so I'm, I'm kind of miffed that yeah. you know, they knew it was delayed and did not tell their backers and then yeah. tell their, did tell their backers. It's also not the first. first time. This is not the first delay. Right. <laughs> it was originally announced for April of 2015. And then on April 28th, they said, okay, it's not going to make it to April. It's, we're pushing it to September. That happened. I mean, March yeah. 28th? Or? They waited past the release date. It just didn't happen. Yeah, they waited like, into April to, to oh, delay it until September. What really gets me is the reason for the delay doesn't make any sense. Sure, sure. Let me read it, too. Okay, here's the reason for the delay. All of the core content for the game is developed and in a complete state. However, there are still bugs and issues pertaining to the online features that are included in the game. Ouch. Kyle. Yeah. No one, no one cares about those online features. You know what people want? They want to play a Mega Man game. Yeah, do you know what the online features are? I couldn't find them. I was trying to find what the online features are. Just let's play a Mega Man game. Let me get that guy's power and then use it against this guy. Yeah. We're done. Mm -hmm. Call it a day. Yeah. Release your game. Honestly, my suspicion is that they were in the certification phase and failed miserably. When I went to go That's see, scary. Yeah. When, yeah. I, when I went to go see Uncharted uh, at E3, when I went to go see like that stage presentation, uh, Mighty Number no. 9 was right around the corner from where it was. Because uh-huh. I because I like, got there and I was like, oh, I got 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, Mighty Number no. 9. So I sat down and like uh, played it for a little bit. And I noticed this guy sitting next to me that was like playing a different level. And then like went in, waited to finally like sit down, waited for them to start Uncharted, saw Uncharted, got up, talked to a couple of journalists before I left, left. Went back in, was like, oh, I got a whole half an hour before the next thing. And I was like, I want to try another level because I saw that there was a level select. Sure. Went back in, guy was still there, <laughs> you know, like 40 minutes later, um, and was still rocking some other crazy level. Like, there was a lot of that game at E3. Yeah. Game, like, like they said, the game's done. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny. That did not seem like a game that was, it was like Mad Max. You know, they just sat you down, they were like, go. I mean, it's not, there's some weird restriction. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just like very, which which Batman had. Batman Arkham Knight, which came out a week after E3, was very restricted in the demo. It was like, no, 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 you can only do these specific things. And it's like, the game's done, what are you talking about? Or it's like, yeah, that, the game felt done. What I played felt like a finished game. Yeah, I concur. It's delayed to Q1, of, they're aiming for Q1 of 2016. It's not been delayed to Q1, they're aiming for it. And Q1 is a long time. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 the fear, the risk, the, the, un, the painful inevitability 
of getting up in front of your crowd, whether it's on a stage or on your, you know, uh, Kickstarter page or on your YouTube channel and just being like, guys, uh, I have bad news. You know, I have this thing. It sucks. I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. that's just the way it is. Like, and, and that they didn't want to do it. You know, it's yeah. got to be that simple, right? Or they were just like, uh, they you were know, delaying. they, yeah, they just, like, they didn't, they were waiting to rip that bandaid off and then they finally did it. Mm -hmm. Um, that is, I'm, I'm so focused on that just in, in this day and age of social media and, and how you know, that you can have something like Kickstarter. It's like, Oh, we're yay fans. What's up? Let's all have a party. Okay. Everybody go to the next room. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, no party's on again. And it's like the party's always on, man. You can't, yeah. you know, once the cat's out of the bag, you can't control that. And so. Uh, that fascinates me to no end. But uh, I want to get my Dick Tracy hat and you know my unsolved mysteries trench back on and, and go. find out what happened <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, because they won't tell you. You got to communicate. You have to communicate so much to the people who backed your project. Because because even at communicating failure is endearing potentially. You well, know, like that can work out. Like we can. It, it, it's understandable. This isn't understandable. That makes right. no sense that they're delaying it for online. Yeah. They've, they've ripped off so many band-aids. You know, they did the Kickstarter, and then they're like, actually, no, we need more money. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, it's getting yeah, delayed. the second Kickstarter. And then, actually, let's announce this other project for this franchise you really care about, while the first one that we're promising to back, you bring back isn't even out. And then let's delay it again and not even give a month. And, uh, you know, we're, we're busy, so, you know, please understand if we're not around to answer any questions. Yeah, that's another update to last week, actually. Red Ash officially was not funded on Kickstarter, did not reach its goal. So did not get any of that $500,000. <laughs> and Ian laughs. We should move on. Uh, no one knows. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This uh. is <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Peter Dinklage, voice actor of the, uh, what's, it's a ghost? Is the thing that ghost, around? yeah. Yep. Yep. Just ghost. Ghost uh, has been replaced by Nolan North, uh, not just going forward for this character, but Nolan North is going to re-record all of the dialogue that has been recorded. Has probably already done it. Already in the game. And that's going to be patched out when the Taken King comes out. Think about that. Like, they could have done, like, a Doctor Who type of thing, right? It's like, yes. oh, he gets, he gets, he gets voice. shot and replaced, or, like, it's a his computer. voice gets scrambled, oh, sure, or yeah, yeah. anything. Yeah. And then it's <laughs> like, no, we're going to record everything over. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> it is insane. I that's mean, comparison, so comparison videos, you know, I can't wait you know, oh, for yeah. people to... Oh, it's, it's like gonna be like PT. It's like you can't get that with those moments back. You know, like even there's a you yeah, know that, you that even, wizard that wizard came from the moon wasn't in the final game. Right, so but you like, can't you can't play Destiny without being connected, right? At all. Yeah. So, so even if now. it's on the disc, you can't get to it. Get your Dinklage while you can't. I mean, th this obviously happened because Peter Dinklage is probably very expensive and doing a lot of things. Right? Do you think that's obvious? I I mean, I think that's the most likely. Okay. Yeah. Which there has to be which, more to it for which them to on their part. Though. I don't know why they but, thought of that. Right. If you're gonna, if this is a game started. that you from the start, yeah. you were like, we're gonna be doing Destiny stuff for ten years. Yeah. Wouldn't that naturally occur to you? I, it, was yeah. it so important to get somebody like Peter Dinklage to voice this guy? I, I I vote no. Like, and that's kind of the weird thing because I'm usually like the guy who brings up voice actors a lot, like on, mm -hmm. on shows that we do. I don't think you need even Nolan North, and like I love the guy. I think he's great. Uh, that's not a role I like need him to play. I think it's a perfect role for somebody that works a lot in the industry, is very established. Nobody really knows who he is. Nobody knows, you know, like what he sounds like. Like Cortana, what's the name of the voice actress who voices Cortana? What's her name? Ooh, I do. Oh, I almost knew it. What's her I, name? Oh. Anyone at this table know? No, people know though. Our viewers know. They're shouting. Yeah, our viewers you know. know. We'll yeah. get corrections music next week. But like on the top of my head, I don't know her name. She's the same She's one amazing. As, she does. I Princess love her Peach. career. She does Princess Peach. Yep, I yeah. knew that. But again, when you, you don't think of Princess Peach when you like do that, whereas like depending yeah. on what Nolan brings to this, it's like I may or may not, you know, think of other roles that he's done. As opposed to like, here's a person who is gonna thank their lucky stars to be involved in Destiny. We can get this person involved, you know, back in any time, you know, unless they like suddenly get popular on some TV show or film or other video game. You yeah. know, is the only time that they're just like, oh, my, you know, I'm I'm too big for this game. I could I easily, that. I could easily see Dinklage's agent just being like, we need to renegotiate this. Like, we need to, sure. we need to go back to the drawing table and figure out like what, like my client has been kind of def, you know, defamed or whatever. You know, it's like this, sure. this has not worked out really great. You know, it was not worth the money you you paid on Dinklage for him to get run through the mud because you guys sure as hell aren't going to say anything about how this game was directed, how the script was written for him, all of it, you know, like mm -hmm. this, it, it, like from my perspective, he didn't do anything wrong. He went in, was given a script, read a line and they said, great. Yep. Yeah. It's on the director. And we use that. Sure. I also, yeah. you know, I it's also like, think like this could be this little conspiracy theory. Okay. This could be part of them just saying like, we need to rebrand hard to 
get past all of the like stuff that people keep saying about Destiny. Like Destiny had a troubled first period of its life. First you know? like, year. First year. Like everyone hated the story. Everyone hated the acting. Everyone hated the mission structure. Everyone thought that their pricing was bad. Like they're trying to move forward with the Taken King. I think that wiping out the terrible acting of the bad story might just it helps Destiny. It doesn't hurt them. Because this is this is not the only equally significant change. They're replacing the light system completely. Yeah. The Actual leveling system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leveling. yeah. You just you just kill things and level up now. Yeah. They're acknowledging That's great. that like Hallelujah. One, the, 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 the like core progression system is flawed and fixing it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually I actually wonder how much of this story I mean if they're gonna have them re record, how much are they rewriting? I don't Well the the big there's a big difference though, Ben. They announced that, right? Like yes. they announced like you know, Bungie came out and said, Hey, we're making this advancement to the leveling system. Some other publication came out and said, Oh, and did you hear this? <laughs> you know, about uh, Nolan actually, North. Did like, they? I thought did, did Bungie like officially cop to Nolan being in the game now? On the light level thing I saw. It Nolan on was doing site. interviews. So this is all from Game Informer actually. Because they, okay. they uh the Taking King King's is on their cover. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And so all of this came from Game Informer's interviews. Okay. So the official yeah, yeah so yeah, that yeah. was part of it. The, the, the reason we heard about Nolan North first is like Game Informer's like, Oh, we gotta get this out there. <laughs> and, and so it's just that came hilarious. And it's hilarious. Uh, I do think, though, Brandon, I don't think they got Nolan North because they wanted a name. I think they got him because he probably gave the best audition. He's just so good. Sure. Yeah, I can buy that. I'd like, I want him to be my buddy for Destiny. You know what I mean? Your buddy who's always yeah. there. Good old Nolan You know, I have, North. On, yeah. on this very podcast, Nolan North. Uh, had a lot of scorn and cynicism for Destiny. But yeah. I have to say, like, this, this takes some hu- – what's up? Scornicism. 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 <laughs> I've uh, – this this takes humility, I think. Sure. You know, it, it's trying. so easy to just be like, here's the new stuff in our new expansion, pay $40, to really go back Lord and and, and look at your game and take that feedback into consideration and say, no, we're actually going to try to make this better. I respect that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I respect I it about, so yeah. much that, like, I am interested in playing Destiny, and I never thought I'd say that. Cool. Be- being honest, we're not infallible, we're not, you yeah. know, perfect game developers, like, this is a growing experience. When we said, you know, they had a 10-year plan, that doesn't mean, like, we got the whole 10 years figured out, and it's locked in, and right. if we get into year 7, and it's all messed up, oh, well, this is the road we set for ourselves, we're willing to change this, we could find ourselves in the same point three years from now, and we have to change everything up, you know. Yeah, it's weird. I think that uh, Taken King had a very good week because I think it was only three weeks ago we were furious at Luke Smith for the things he was saying about the way that they're charging us money for the Taken King. I was just thinking King. about that, yeah. yeah. In, in, a, in retrospect, that just now feels like a really bad interview. Sure. Not, not necessarily like a company-wide problem, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it feels like we're over it. It feels yeah. like we're through it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Here's... Well, this, is, this news is so fun. <laughs> you, you might remember a GT Time episode called The New Tony Hawk Already Looks Bad. Um, and so some action has been taken. This game comes out next month. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 comes out next, next month, month in you're, September. You're not going to put quotations over improves? <laughs> I just put a question mark because yeah. honestly, Brandon, I think it may have improved. Here's what's happened to listeners. Uh, the new Tony Hawk game, uh, yeah, one month away from launch, has gone with a cell shaded look. Now all people have outlines among on their character models, and uh, I guess the textures are slightly more uh, cartoony. I don't know what what is what has happened really, but yeah, it's cell shaded game now. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five is a cell shaded game. Uh, there was no big announcement for this. Uh, the the website that covered it what was it just called Ride. Hmm. It was a, like Ride Magazine or something. It was just called Ride. I don't remember the, the link, but it's not a video game centric website. But they had all the new screenshots. And uh, this is the way it was announced. Just here, here's how our game looks now. Are yeah. we okay with it, Brandon? You're giving me like soft eyes. You're not into this. Well, again, again, it, it, to me, uh, the angle I'm always going to take, which uh, uh, you know, I, I will never apologize for, is like, what? How should they have announced this? What's the What's the trailer? And to me, the trailer is like, you have Tony Hawk just like walk out with his board, looking like he did before. And then, like, maybe real Tony Hawk's next to him, and it's just kind of like, eh, and, like, snaps, and then he becomes, like, like okay. cel-shaded. And then he's like, there we go. Now, we're now like, so they, they're owning up that they're like, well, that was the initial thing that we did. And, yeah. you know, didn't get great reaction from it. Maybe we weren't necessarily excited about the way it looked, but, hey, how about this? You know Have you seen do? a trailer for this game, though? 
I don't think that I have. No, not an official big trailer Ooh. announcement. Yeah, they had like... Because we would score the hell out of that for sure. Yeah, they had like a, a gameplay reveal, but it was not necessarily a trailer. We need that trailer pretty bad. This is this is like... Is it just me or does this smell like, like Activision value level game? Like it's... You know, they, they could have almost just like put this on store shelves like Duck Dynasty and never told anybody. Right, like Duck Dynasty was a sixty dollar game at this point this last year. So you're right, Blood. You're right. Even though it is a value game, it'll still be full price and then drop off very fast. Like it doesn't feel like they are invested in like bringing back Tony Hawk in a big what what whatsoever. You're right. They don't care that we're bad. The party was big though. Spent a lot of money on catering. What party are you talking about? Now. The whatever party, remember the, the infamous party that oh, launched the game. It was an, well, it was like secretly announced with the party. That was right. a caterer who took a picture. No, I know, but yeah, it's still, yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was in the game's budget. They still spent money on it. <laughs> you're right. Or maybe Tony Hawk sprung for that. Who knows? Uh, ben, you're sighing a lot. Are you not happy with how this game looks now? The infamous Ben sigh. I mean, Tony Hawk is a game that I spent so much time with. Like, yeah, I, I when I every, anytime I think about Tony Hawk one, two, and three, and even when I go back and play them, I'm like, this is so incredible. Yeah, like, there's so much here, and there's still so much they could do. You know, uh, think about like where online capabilities were with the PS2 and Tony Hawk three, and all of the things that could be done, like the sharing of tracks and just like the competitions you could do, just with those those core mechanics that felt so good in the NeverSoft games, and it's just. That, it's just been gone down the drain, and this just seems like they don't know what they have. So think about it this way. So you, you're Activision, you know, you've, you've allotted your whole budget for the year, and you've seen how much money, like, this is it. This is the pie that we're willing to spend on Tony Hawk 5. Um, it, it's interesting to have games kind of in this Kickstarter era where it's like, you know, let's bring that franchise back. Well, let's not make it a, a huge thing. Let's actually make a smaller, you know, a smaller game. Let's not spend that much money on it. Um, maybe with the interest of like scaling this thing. You know, it's like all we got to add is like more, you know, uh, more characters, uh, more equipment, more customizable options, more areas. Like that's the way to to build a game. That's what we got with every new Tony Hawk. You know, with like some some new modes here or there. Um, that like I wonder, it, it, would you rather have a Tony Hawk Five like this, or would you rather just Tony Hawk still be not around? You know, I think. Whatever they're doing here, again, is it looks cheap. It feels cheap. Yeah. It feels like nobody cares. Why call that Tony Hawk Pro Skater Five? Good yeah. point. Yeah. Because why not just call it Tony Hawk Pro Skater, whatever you want to call it? Yep. Yeah. Because five Tony Hawk feels Super to Friends. me like you're like you're even forgetting about American Wasteland. You're forgetting right. about all that other stuff that you did. Uh, in those other eras and saying, hey, we're going back to the roots and we're going to bring back Tony Hawk in a big way. No, you're not. No, because they're... You're not doing that. They're, they're, they're trying to convince you that it's more important than it is. That's all they're doing. More people will pay attention to this because it says Tony Hawk 5. Yeah. It's it's that like wrong. it's that like acceptable losses argument. Where yeah, they're like, exactly. well, we'll get the brand out there. They'll see literally Tony Hawk Five, and like that'll generate a, an excitement. When they see the graphics, it'll take away. But like even dropping down to this level is higher than it would be if it was Tony I mean, Hawk Super Friends or whatever. Yeah, if like, it was called just like Tony Hawk's Skateboards or whatever, yeah. and it was clearly a budget title, we wouldn't be talking Tony about Hawk, it right now. Boarding. You're right. You're totally also, right. It would not totally, be on the show right now. He's totally in the same kind of position as that guy on the time cover <laughs> which is another story yeah that's a i don't there, even want there to are photoshops the of that actually of those yeah. two things together so. i want to make a photoshop of that oh, you know what's funny about this the reason i picked it actually though is the last time we were talking about tony hawks 5 i said they should be screaming they should be having intense facial expressions this guy is actually screaming uh, as he crying. kyle what did you do <laughs> i like it if you could call I, that a yeah. facial a human facial expression in any way i just wanted to pick it because it's, it's kind of like, like if you could call kind of, that self-hating uh, but yeah. you know it is, it's not quite cell shading. That is why I had a hard time describing it. Blood, how would you describe the graphical effect before we move on? Um, highly saturated. Outlined? I don't know. Yeah, everyone's got like a, a... Oh, man, it's so weird. It's like basically a lot of like... It's what Smash Bros. on the 3DS did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like that, that those, those initial like videos came out and they said oh no one likes this quick let's change it without really a lot of thought mm -hmm. put into it you know I'm sure a lot of thought went into well, it well it's I, mean, I don't know it's coming out next month yeah didn't put a lot of thought until how they would tell us about it basically yeah it's just it, it just seems messy oh yeah the trailer I would make is like reading YouTube comments and tweets out loud about how the old one looks you know what I mean? I would like just do, directly just face that. Just like, okay, you all thought our game looks bad. We're trying our hardest to salvage it before we release it. You thought it looked bad then? Look at it now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to, well, you're the one who started this conversation. 
Uh, boy, we have... Uh, we'll go through this quickly. Uh, this is from Daniel Warren. Um, it was announced recently that Nomura plans to bring dramatic changes to Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat, and that he is planning to draw inspiration from Advent Children, both visually and stylistically. Do you think this is a good thing? Part of remaking a classic seems like it should be sticking to what made it a classic in the first place, and not risking the fans who made it what it what, <clears throat> what it is on untested or worse, divisive new ideas. A polished up translation of the story, re-recorded soundtrack, and fully realized environments and characters seem like enough to make this project amazing, so why alter the gameplay? Given the relative failings of the series' recent entries to uh, garner a positive audience, shouldn't now be the time for Square Enix to play it safe, especially given the amount of success a Bravely Default and its, tr and its more traditional vibe? Uh, would love the panel's thoughts. Mm. Curious what you think. I definitely have an opinion on this. Wow. S comparing the Final Fantasy VII remake to Bravely Default's success does not make sense on any level. Explain that. Because Bravely Default was successful in the sense that Square Enix was like, oh, some people care about this. Sure. If Final Fantasy VII Remake did as well as Brave the, or Brave the Fault, like it would be considered a catastrophic failure, right? <laughs> like they're going all in. <laughs> um, and sure, I I'm I in a weird way I kind of have the same opinion. And like I want there to be a turn, like if you're going to remake the game, you don't have to reinterpret it necessarily. People already love it. I already love it. But in the grand scheme of things, I don't think any of that matters. Whether you keep ATB or you do something totally new, all people care about is if it's good, right? If Final Fantasy VII Remake has a new combat system, but it's excellent, does it, does it really matter that it changed, you know? I, I think it matters in a good way. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think... Well, actually, Brandon, I want to hear your opinion. You have one locked and loaded. What's going on? Um, I, I'll, this is a, a quick tangent, not to bring up Batman into every conversation, but I had, a really, I had a really interesting artistic event a couple of years ago, and Whoa. it's when Batman Year One and Dark Knight Returns were both released on DVD. Uh, and uh, Dark Knight Returns, is, I, I think, critically, might be one of the best uh, Batman comics ever made, but Batman Year One, next to Killing Joke, is my absolute favorite. It's just a fantastic origin of Batman. I love that story. And so Year One comes out on DVD, and I was like, let's do this. This is great. And I pop it in, and it, it was Year One. It was scene by scene, line by line, block by block, that story and I was kind of bored actually when it was over I was like yeah they did it I mean they did it they fulfilled every wish I could have ever had and it was just kind of it was cool it was there you know like they there was like a, one little moment that they focused on a little bit more than the comic did but like that was very very faithful and then I saw Dark Knight Returns and they tweaked it they, they they took full characters out like there was a whole like Ronald Reagan was in Dark Knight Returns and they were just like nope you know like they, they definitely made it a movie you know like told their own story like like kind of like changed Batman's attitude and stuff and like I was drooling over that film I loved it so much it's one of the best comic adaptations to an animated film I've ever seen and I stuck back I looked back at both of those and was like you got to change it a little bit. You have to. Like, I think, I think if you just kind of shoehorn these amazing character models and this incredible universe into this uh, gameplay model that was built 20 years ago, I, I think it's ultimately it's just gonna it's gonna feel like this thing just wants to break away from all of these you know restraints and try something new when it can't because it's got to it has to fit materia all that you know like it has to work with these systems. So uh, it, it, I don't it, know. You, I mean, think about game development. You think about these guys doing it, and day by day by day, and then one guy like has it. He's like, "Whoa, you know what? What if we didn't?" Like, no, we can't. We can't change anything. And you're like, "Yeah, but I got a good idea." And it's like, "You can't because it's got to be seven. I I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I, I kind of I, I mean, I think that there definitely needs to be some upgrades, but at the same time, like if you you know if you look at Star Wars, you know. Like, people don't want the changes, you know, it's like, no, I just want, like, the Star Wars that I watched originally in HD. Yeah. I don't want to see a, another is, actor thrown in there or a changed music or something like that, you know. That's, that's, I, well, that's like a, that's re, that's a reprint, though. and it's a two-hour experience. I think there's a right. lot of different... Uh, yeah. But, but I, I think you're getting that. I think that's the remastered, you know what I mean? The, the PC build that's coming to PS4. I think that's what that is. Right. But, I mean, I think people want to... Yeah, I don't know. Uh... I, I mean, I think there's things that, I, I think the question comes with, yeah, with dramatic changes is just not very specific, right? And it's like. Yeah, because they probably don't know. Like, Brandon, like, they probably have no idea what the comic So it's like, right okay, now. do you mean, you know, like, if you meant something like, we're not going to cut to a different battle scene because that may be awkward. 
You sure. Know, like if you have these greatly, you know, detailed streets and stuff, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're going to cut to some other place. You know, like that, you know, that to me makes sense to like, okay, let's just, let's modernize this. Let's have everything, you know, be like Chrono Trigger and let's just, oh, here's your menus. Go for it. I mean, I think, I think that's the, like, modernization is the, is the key. Yeah. Like you take out the save crystals and just have it auto save. You make it so battles happen faster. You make it so in the areas when you're in the downtown area, and you're like, where am I? Sp- which which shop is this shop? Like, I've been here for two hours. You make it so that you can actually just keep playing the game without getting stuck for a hundred years. Like, I think that nostalgia is playing a big role in why we all love this game because it's a great game, yeah. But like, if you go back and play it again, like there are definitely places where it's showing its age. Yeah, I mean, we are and playing I think it right you, now. Yeah, <laughs> and I think I think those We're areas. Playing it tonight. You change the hell out of it. Like, yeah, make the battle system new. Make the save system new. Make the areas more not streamlined, like in terms of content, but like make it a little clearer where you're supposed to go or like what you're supposed to do. Have a journal, quest log, whatever. I don't know. The reason the Resident Evil remake is considered the pinnacle of of remakes is because, honestly. It treats Resident Evil 1 on PS1 like a first draft. It does not say, this is so sacred, we have to do everything exactly like this. It understands what the game is, it understands what made it special to so many people, and it just cuts out everything else. And it makes it make sense. Yes. Like you, you read these dialogues from Spencer, the guy who built yeah. this mansion, and him being trapped and his family being taken away from him. And it's just like, whoa, this is this is a little bit more than a video game. This is actually a really tragic gothic story. You know, you, like Lisa right. was like the most win addition ever. Yeah. You know, it's just like, wow. And, and it's not something where it's like, Crimson oh, well, heads. that wasn't happening in the first game. Like maybe it was. Maybe you just didn't bump into Lisa in the first game, but she totally could have been there. You know, like she's wandering out in the forest. Like, um, so yeah. So I think the, the other thing too that we haven't talked about about his advent children. I think that like, which is interesting because I thought everyone just gobbled up all of that Final Fantasy VII celebration stuff. Nope. But I guess like a lot of people were, I thought Advent Children was awesome. It like, is I, awesome. You know, I, I was, j- not not because it was where I wanted that story to go because I, I'm not that connected to the story of Seven, but it was entertaining as hell. And so, and I think when, what people have to understand is them already doing that and already having these proofs of character in a 3D environment probably was one of the reasons why they were willing to you know, fund a seven because it's like, well, we've done that work already. You know, that we can, maybe the character models look a little bit different, but it's like, we don't have to totally start from scratch. We, we do have a visual idea of how they can, how we can jazz up these battles, you know, and make it look cooler because we've already done it. So, you know, everybody being like, oh, I would totally move away from seven. It's like, then you're just adding this, lumping this huge budget on top of it, you know, uh, because they, they, they can't use any of that. You know, they, they got to make everything look different. Yeah, uh, to Daniel Warren, to conclude, I would just say don't be scared. Don't worry. Like like what Brandon said. Yeah, be scared. It's coming out in 2018, but or don't be worry scared. a lot. My worst fear, <laughs> my worst fear for Daniel Warren is that it's the same game. That this person can hop into the game like Brandon watching that movie and just plow through it knowing what's coming. Because that's my worst fear. Honestly, all that produces is a comparison thread where it's like this thing looks like this now. This thing looks like this now, and then you're done. Yeah, well, boredom. It produces yeah, boredom, exactly. which is even scarier. Yeah. I don't, that's my, it, I'd rather it be bad and interesting than the same thing again. Or predictable. Yeah. And there's no surprises ever. Yeah. You're like, surely but, you want to be surprised in there somewhere. But not to, not to beat this to death, but that, that was what was so magical about that Resident Evil remake. It was both incredibly familiar, mm-hmm. but there were so many surprises. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, like it was doing both of those things at once throughout the entirety of the game. That's the model. That's it. Yeah. Man. Okay, uh, we should uh, move on to time for bets. Uh, ooh, that sounds cool. Whoa. That's like an yeah, NES somebody's, explosion. Somebody's playing Galaga or something. In that was awesome. That nice. Somebody's phone. Near oh, you know, it's, it's my phone because I'm using it for the Maybe, stupid yeah. show this week. All right, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, stupid phone. Uh, stupid phone. Uh, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture will release on Tuesday. This was announced three years ago. It's from the Chinese room, developers of Amnesia and Dear Esther. Um, well, Amnesia, Machine for Pigs. Yes. Why is there another Amnesia? Yeah. Dr. Sam, yeah, first, first one. one. Oh, okay. Um, thank Ugh. you for that. Well, I don't know the difference. <laughs> well, the first one was the better one. The good oh, so, one so this is the bad one? Bad. Yeah. They, they made the bad one? Yeah. yeah. Why are but people excited about this game? Because Dear Esther is phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. Dear Esther is cool, and this game looks cool. Yeah. And, and very unusual. Yeah, I'm sorry for being so Do we know uh, if Jessica Curry did the soundtrack for this one, too? I'm she did pretty sure she's games. on this. Yeah. Oh, she's so good. Yeah. Uh, how long will the credits for this game be? 
Uh, yeah, I got my answer. Uh, Ian, I, I've, I've seen people on social media being like, just heard the music for the game. Oh, my God. You know, oh, so. man. Okay. So stoked. Excited. Tuesday pre-order. It comes out this Tuesday, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so excited. Uh, so, Ben, what, how long do you think the credits will be? Kyle, this was a bet where I was like, I don't know. Okay. And I just wrote some stuff down. So Look, if this, this is embarrassing, I apologize. Sl- oftentimes that will work. Yeah. Uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. Great. Uh, I went with 11 minutes. Whoa, those are some long credits, Whoa. blood. Wow. That's like three songs. Okay. Should I feel scared being so, so far from blood, or should I be excited about that? Be excited. <laughs> Please be excited. Minute 20. Okay. Uh, and then yeah. We're going to wrap that up real quick. I went with a minute and 32 seconds. So I got the low vote. Okay. So, uh, Dear Esther gonna be, was. It's going to be 215, and Kyle's going to win. Dear it's Esther was. Six, it was 116, was Dear Esther. And then I but figured, Dear Esther was just them, right? Yeah. And so this one's actually being published by Sony. So I, I, there's going to be a lot of added names. Yeah. I won this bet. Whoa. Okay. Well, let me lock that in before we. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Ben. I'm so confident that I, I won, this, won bet. this bet. Yeah. I I've never say, felt this good about a GC time. I can before. say that never works out. Yep. When you ask. I hope I, I hope they bet. rolled by like a, when a movie plays on a on like a regular TV network, and they like go to the news. They're like, okay, in the eleven o'clock news, and then like in the corner, just like goes like flying by like I oh, wonder, the, the I wonder, credits I wonder what yeah. I wonder yeah. if there's like a cap on that speed they're like you can play it at six times normal speed that's you can't go seven times well there you know? is because like when TBS <laughs> does no, reruns there's no, absolutely there's no way you're reading that no like I hope it's like that I hope they're just like oh yeah where it's like going so fast that it literally can't be read even yeah. if yeah. you watched it frame by frame but there's like a writing guild that says this is how fast you need to show the names of the people who worked on this project yeah you know, like you know there's like an actual agreement for that which is oh, insane yeah, sure. um let's talk about last week's bet Rare Replay released this week. Uh, what I did was I went to GameRankings.com and I looked for uh, the 10 most recent reviews for this game, searching for the word value. Last week I bet I would see it seven times. Brad in the super seat bet 12. Bloodworth bet five. And Blair in your seat bet 13. 13. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel good about that, no, huh? No, that's a big number. I wouldn't have gone 13. The number of times I saw the word value in 10 reviews is 13. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Thirteen. Ian, should we give him like something special for getting it right on, right on the number? Uh, him being give, me. Give him, give him a nice, <laughs> like a nice pat on the back. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> an official pat on the there back. There you go. I can't believe that he got it exact. There was one review that said value four times. That really tipped it off. It was somebody who let Peoples. It was like John Peoples. I'm gonna give Blair a big hug. I can't back believe there. that. Oh, I'm so happy. So uh, things are looking up I for me. I was real upset about that four in one. It was like all in the in like one paragraph too. Yeah, it was. Well, it wasn't all in one, but yeah, it was, it was, like two it was nasty. Yeah. yeah, really. I, mean, I guess the value is it a big appeal he's of that a regular, game. He's a regular Dan Brown. <laughs> I That's base. like. A lot of repetitive, code joke. yeah, a lot of de- repetitive word usage. It's, in a it's damn almost a high. So that's why I love his books. Um, here, let's go through. Uh, yeah, I think actually repetition can be good in writing. I don't think it can be good in a review if you're using value oh four God. times in a review. But I base all my gaming purchases on value. Oh God, you don't don't value <laughs> value and content. I'm reading IQ 84 right now by Murakami. And it, this could be part of the translation. This is a highbrow reference. That's like, like the most Ian Hink sentence I've ever but heard. But everyone yeah. is knitting their brows all the time. Like, mm-hmm. he knit his brows, which is like, you know. They use, he they that, use that, that phrase all the time. Starting in book four, George R. R. Martin did much and more. Just fell in love with some. He was at some party, and some guy was like, there's much and more to expect here tonight. And he was like, much and more. And just, yeah, like that's what sucks about brains is they're not even conscious of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, what? it's well, in, you, the editor should be conscious. There's of one that. in the Dark right. Tower too that they use over and over again that I kind of liked, but it was like all the time. Now I can't remember. I mean, if there's one character that said that, but that's not Game of Thrones. Right. They'll be yeah. like, they're like, meanwhile, in the you know, you know, King's Landing, and Cersei's like, much and more, and it's like, a guy said that at the wall. You, no, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to points though, because Brandon, you got a lot of points right now. Uh, Super Seat's got ten. Bloodworth has twelve. Brandon Jones now has five in a lightning bolt, just right behind me at six points. That's our totals right now. Pretty soon, I'll be able to count my wins on both hands for the first time in the history of this show. Right. <laughs> Brandon Jones has long been a joke of the scoreboard, but now look at him with you a could, lightning bolt even. You could already do it where you do like Oh, the lightning bolt, yeah. And a, and like a, <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see how everything. <laughs> the, the super seat already has the next week's bet. Yeah. So sorry, I mean, Brandon. It'll be a while until you catch <laughs> up, Brandon. Fine. That's fine. Um, so, uh, Brandon, what you win is the right to promote any show, your own Twitter handle, and no one else's. 
This is the compromise we're coming to from last week's oh, deliberations. Okay. Screw your Twitter handles. Yep. And uh, uh, and uh, say goodbye to everybody. Well, thanks, everybody. Well, this is, you know, on behalf of Ben Moore and Daniel Bloodworth and Cal Bossman and Ian Hank. Uh, I'm not telling you their, their handles, but I'll tell you their names at least. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I invite you to watch uh, our... our E3, I almost called it E3, our Gamescom coverage, which is up on our YouTube channel. Um, you can go and check out uh, all of our post reactions. We did a reaction to the on first day to Microsoft. The GT Reviews channel. Yeah. GT Reviews channel, youtube.com sure. slash GT Reviews. Uh, we did one after Microsoft, we did one after uh, EA, um, leading into Square Enix doing a thing and Call of Duty doing a thing. And then today we talked about Blizzard. Um, and so you can be able to see all that, youtube.com slash GT Reviews. And it's extensive. It's extremely extensive. Yeah, yeah. I think we got up to about nine or 10 hours of, uh, of coverage this week. Yeah. Which, um, you know, certainly we would do more if we were actually in Germany. Germany, but it's like unless we can get like we, we didn't get hands on a lot of stuff this week and that's like the big differential that like that's what launches a, a 30 minute uh, No Man's Sky argument uh, and uh, yeah but we, we we covered Gamescom it came and went it's still running through the weekend uh, so check out our coverage and thank you so much for watching and uh, what is your own Twitter handle though oh my own Twitter handle is Game Trailers VO okay it's quiet <laughs> too quiet Let's <laughs> <laughs>